Hello and welcome to another episode of Handloader TV. I'm your host, Jeremiah. And in this episode, we've got a treat for you. We are talking about the first commercially available 20 caliber cartridge. Sammy approved the 204 Ruger. Now this is a cartridge I've had lots of experience with. Um, I've taken this particular rifle on many varmint trips, hunting trips, uh, shot a lot of prairie dogs with it, coyotes. So I've got a lot of field experience with this rifle and cartridge combination. So I'm very excited to present it to you today. And as usual, I'd like to start out with a little bit of history on the cartridge. It was the first commercially available 20 caliber cartridge. Prior to this, there had been some limited wildcatting done. Um, and there's today quite a few wildcats out there that utilize 20 caliber projectiles. A 20 Vartard comes to mind, 20 Tactical, 20 Practical, and other things like that. However, the 204 Ruger was a commercial success, and it's done very, very well for itself. It's based on the 222 Remington Magnum, the wonderful triple deuce cartridge, neck down to 20 caliber and the shoulder adjusted slightly. But overall, it's very, very efficient utilizing those 20 caliber projectiles and it's very very fast as well and that comes with a lot of appeal in and of itself especially here in america we like the fast cartridges we like the hot rods break 4,000 feet per second and this cartridge is capable of that it was initially developed as a joint venture between ruger and hornady and when they first started loading the 204 actually one of the propellants that they used for it was smp uh, 746 and it was an outstanding powder it contained a decoppering agent in it uh, very efficient in the 204 Ruger and Hodgden realized this and recognized this and so they went on to release CFE 223 powder which is a canister grade version of the SMP 746 propellant so really neat to see that. We're going to do some testing with CFE 223. It might not make it into this video just because a lot of people know this and it's there's tons of low data out there for the 204 Ruger and CFE 223. But we figured it would be a miss if we didn't at least mention that powder. And having that decoppering agent in there is a great aid because generally speaking, the smaller caliber cartridges, 17 caliber, 20 caliber, even 22 caliber, They'll generally foul up a little bit faster than, say, your 30 6 338s, 375s, things of those nature. So as a result, it makes a lot of sense to have that decoppering agent in there and to help aid in shooting longer while you're out there in the field without the need for cleaning your rifle. Certainly it doesn't eliminate the need of cleaning your rifle, but it can prolong your shooting sessions and time in between cleanings. With that, we have this Kimber 84M. This is a personal favorite of mine. I really enjoy this rifle. Let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look and go through the specs on this guy. So this particular rifle is a Kimber model 84M Varmint, and the overall weight of the rifle with the optic is nine pounds, one ounce. And it is a really nice rifle. I've spent a lot of time in the field with it, and it's unfortunate that it has so many scratches and dings in the beautiful wood stock. But starting out at the back here, we have a half inch Packmeyer decelerator recoil pad, which is more than sufficient for use with the 204 cartridge. It's very mild recoiling, very easy to self-spot your hits and misses, and it doesn't hurt your shoulder. So that half inch thin Packmeyer decelerator works outstanding. It's got a sling stud on the rear here and on the fore end as well. The length of pull is 13.6 inches, and the stock here is grade A walnut that is hand rubbed, oil finished, and it has a steel grip cap here, which is just a, a really nice touch if you ask me. We have some fine checkering here at 20 lines per inch, and the action is pillar bedded with glass bedding compound. So. A lot of little things go into this rifle to just make it really nice and also efficient and shoot well. The action itself is the Kimber 84M action. It is steel, blued matte black, and it is a Mauser style extractor here, which personally I'm a big fan of. You see these on the 
pre-64 Model 70s. You see them on uh, the new modern controlled round feed Model 70s. And I'm just a big fan. And so it, the bolt's pretty smooth. It's well worn in. It's a little bit dirty right now because this rifle inevitably has always got some number of rounds through it between cleanings. Inside here we have our ejector. So very nice here. I have a dummy cartridge here to kind of show you how this works. Some controlled round feed rifles won't let you just drop the cartridge in like that. This rifle you actually can and the bolt will close with no resistance. Pick up that bolt and we'll kick that guy out just like that. If you do that slower, the round will hang up in here because of the fixed ejector in here. Basically, it's a little rod there. And as you retract the bolt to the rear, that rod hits the rim of the cartridge case and kicks it out of the action. Very efficient, very controlled, very nice. Big fan of it, personally speaking. We have a three position wing safety here, just like on a Winchester Model 70. Forward is fire, the middle position is safe, you cannot pull the trigger, but you can operate the bolt. And in the rearmost position, that is safe, you cannot pull the trigger, and you cannot work the bolt. I personally am also a big fan of three position safeties, especially if I'm taking the rifle on horseback or in the backcountry where it's easy for things to get snagged, your bolt can open, stuff like that. Just a big fan of those in general. Rolling right along here, we have a stainless steel barrel with flutes on it to reduce weight. And it is 24 inches in length, satin stainless steel, 1 and 12 twist with six grooves. The contour is a heavy sporter contour. And if we jump back here to the trigger, we have a very nice factory trigger that breaks cleanly and crisply with no over travel, no creep at 2 pounds 4 ounces on an average of 5 pulls on our Wheeler Engineering trigger pull gauge, which I found to be very accurate. It has, according to the nomenclature from Kimber, a match grade chamber. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, it wasn't clear in everything I read, but I can attest that this rifle is very accurate. Uh, it's performed very well for us, but we'll get to that more in a bit. We have held in loophole backcountry bases and mounts, rings. We have a loophole VX6 2 to 12 power optic and it is a fixed parallax optic which is parallaxed at 150 yards. That's important to note because this is a varmint hunting rifle and uh, it's important to know what your parallax is at when you're trying to hit small targets at extended ranges. But we'll, again we'll get into that more towards the end of this video. That pretty much sums up the rifle. Let's go ahead and we'll jump on over to the hand loading side of things. Well, one more thing before we do that, though I did forget, it has a floor plate here, which can be opened by pressing this button inside the trigger guard. You can drop the floor plate, easily unload the rifle, and then it clicks back in place. The magazine capacity on this rifle is six rounds of 204 Ruger. Now, hand loading. We've gathered together a lot of high quality components for this project. So starting out with some of the things that we're going to be using, I have actually two die sets here from Redding. I have their traditional two die rifle set. And then I also have their competition series uh, type S bushing dies as well. So what I'm doing for this particular project is from the two die set, I've got their full length standard sizing die installed under the press here, preset, ready to go. But then when it comes to bullet seating, I'll be using their uh, Type S Competition Series seating die. It has a micrometer adjustable top, which I am personally a big fan of, makes it very easy to dial in your overall loaded length. And in addition to that, it also has a sliding sleeve that is under spring tension here. And what that does is it just aids in con concentrically seating your bullets. So I'm a big fan of these dies. And then using the standard full length sizing die, I don't have to mess around with bushings or anything like that. And in this particular cartridge, this full length sizing die with this rifle, it seems to work really well. As far as brass goes, we've selected uh, very nice nozzler cases. And to be honest with you, at the time of this filming, they were in stock, so it just worked out perfectly. I'm a big fan of nozzler cases as well. Had good results and luck with them throughout the years. 
and that's the cases we'll be using for all of these loads here. As you can see, we also have a good lineup of powders. We've got a few bullets. We might add a few more to this test depending on how it goes. But overall, very good components. So now rather than walk you through step by step and you watch me load all 250 rounds that we're going to put to the test on this particular rifle, I'm just going to really quick run you through it exactly what we did for this test, for this project, so that you guys can duplicate our results at home. So I started out with brand new unfired Nosler cases. I went ahead and full length sized all of them, uh, barely bumping the shoulder with our full length sizing die there. Just the main reason why I ran these through these is to iron out any dents or dings and set proper neck tension, just in case there was some discrepancies with the new cases. So full length sized them. I applied a little bit of Hornady Unique case lubricant prior to sizing so the cases wouldn't get stuck. And uh, from there, I went ahead and used a RCBS Brass Boss. I put a chamfer and deburr on the case mouths and cleaned out the, or reamed out the primer pockets, uniformed them, and didn't do anything to the flash holes in this particular lot of brass. So then it was time to prime them. For priming, I went ahead and used a Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer tool. I'm a big fan of that tool. It works really well. I don't have it here on the table with me because I don't want to seat primers on this case. I want to make some dummy rounds for demonstration purposes, but it's a great tool for seating primers. From there, all the cases were placed in loading blocks and powder was dispensed and the cases were charged. For that, I used an RCBS Matchmaster powder dispenser. All charges were accurate to four hundredths of a grain and I ensured that our powder charges were within that tolerance, within that amount of variance. So from there, once the cases were chamfered, deburred, primed, and uh, charged, it was time to seat bullets. So for that, I went ahead and swapped out the full length sizing die for our competition series seating die. And for demonstration purposes, we'll show you what that looks like. I've got some 32 grain Hornady V-Maxes here, a personal favorite bullet of mine. I also really like the 40 grain V-Maxes in this cartridge as well. We'll test both of these in this project. So I'll place the bullet as straight and as nicely as I can on that case there. And then we will run it up into our seating die with our sliding sleeve to help align the brass case and the bullet for concentrically seated bullets. Go ahead and take an overall loaded length measurement, which is right about at 2.260. That's perfect. That's uh, right within the SAMI spec there. And the reason for that also is that 2.260 number is perfect for feeding from your AR-15 rifles. In fact, you can easily have an AR-15 rifle chambered in 204 Ruger, which is kind of neat. This particular rifle here being a bolt action made by Kimber, I can feed cartridges I think up to 2.30 inches, maybe even a little bit more, 2.310 inches. So there's plenty of room for seating bullets out long. I've never had to seat bullets out that long. I found they'll jam into the rifling before I get anywhere near that uh, maximum magazine length, which as a hand loader, that's something I can greatly appreciate in the rifle. So there you have it. That's pretty much everything we did to assemble the hand loads. Once I go to reload the brass, what I'll do is I'll dump it in a tumbler with some Arbor Freight corn cob media in there. I'll dab a splash of turtle wax polishing compound in there. It's the same stuff you use on your car. Works really well to shine up the cases. Then I'll reload them and I'll do some varmint shooting with them once I'm done with this. So there you have it. Now we're going to go to the range here in a moment, but before we do, there's something I need to mention. When we showcase our shooting, we're going to do a ton of shooting. I've got over 250 rounds uh, for this particular rifle and test, plus some Hornady factory ammunition as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to show you the best results we get with this particular rifle. 
And if you guys want to see everything that we tested, the good, the bad, the ugly, check the group sizes, check the velocity, check what powders and bullet combinations we used, all that stuff, then I would highly encourage you guys to head on over to loaddata.com. It's our sister website. It's a part of the Wolf Publishing brands, and it works closely with Handloader Magazine as well. And we publish all of our results on that website. So go in there in the search bar and type in Handloader TV and you should have no trouble finding the 204 Ruger loads for this video, and you'll be able to see all the powders we tested, the group sizes, velocity, everything you wanna know. The only thing you won't be able to see is the exact powder charges we use because we reserve that information for subscribers only. And if you do subscribe, it's a yearly fee for that. You have access to the world's largest online loading manual, the largest loading manual in the world available to the public and it's a great way to support the channel, support what we're doing, because we are all about providing the best information that we possibly can for you guys, and presenting real-world data, real-world testing with an unbiased opinion. So I would encourage you guys to check that out. On that note, let's grab this stuff. We'll go ahead and hit the range and put this rifle to the test. So we're out on the range. We've got the Kimber 84M benched in and target is downrange at 100 yards as usual for all of our load development videos we have an Ailer model 35p chronograph set up 10 feet from the muzzle to record all of our velocities and today's a little bit different kind of day here in arizona the temperature according to the kestrel 5700 is 74 degrees fahrenheit and there's pretty much no wind right now maybe zero to three miles per hour if it changes i'll let you guys know but for now a beautiful day the humidity is 65 percent it's an overcast day and we just had a storm roll through altitudes 5,000 feet and pressure is 30.24 uh, when adjusted for our elevation so we've got a target let's go ahead and get set up and we'll send some rounds down range the first ammunition that we're going to be testing here is the Hornady Superformance Varmint ammunition. I've had really good luck with this stuff. This particular loading of it is using the 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet. Also had good success with that in the field on various critters. So let's put it on the paper and we'll see how it groups. Looks like there might be a little bit of vertical stringing in that group, but all in all, it looks pretty good. And that first shot was indeed a cold and a clean bore shot, so take that into consideration. So up next, I've got some more Hornady ammunition. This is their Varmint Express ammunition, and it is also using a 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet. And the velocity is supposed to be the same at 3,900 feet per second. So we'll see how these compare to the Superformance ammunition and send another group on the paper.
This next load we're using Ramshot TAC powder, a 29.0 grain charge with a 24 grain Hornady NTX bullet, Nosler cases, Federal 205M primers, and our overall loaded length is 2.255 inches. This is actually my dad's favorite powder in the 204 Ruger, Ramshot TAC. He likes it because it is extremely clean burning. But let's go ahead and see what kind of group it puts on the paper. Now we're swapping over to a favorite powder of mine in the 204 Ruger. This is Shooter's World Precision Rifle Powder, a 26.5 grain charge with a 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet, Federal 205M primers, and our overall loaded length is at a maximum of 2.260 inches. Well, this is a bolt action rifle. I could probably seat bullets out quite a bit longer, uh, keeping them to that AR magazine length restriction and, and Sammy spec for the video. Let's go ahead and put a nice tiny group on the paper. So we're rolling right along. IMR 8208 XBR powder, a 26.5 grain charge is up next with a 32 grain Nosler ballistic tip varmint, Federal 205M primers, Nosler cases, and an overall loaded length of 2.250 inches. Got the lab radar set up to double check our velocities. The clouds have really rolled in and the, the wind's a little bit choppy now. Uh, gusts and they've been shaking the chronograph a little bit, so I just want to make sure we get all of our velocities recorded. But enough talk, time to shoot. The next load that we're going to try is using Accurate 2230 powder, a 26.5 grain charge with a 32 grain Hornady VMAX bullet, Nosler cases, Federal 205M primers, and our overall loaded length is 2.255 inches. Now ballistically speaking, this powder, Accurate 2230, is very similar to Ramshot X Terminator. In fact, in the Western Powder's loading manual, they use the same charge weights. So I thought it would be kind of fun to compare and contrast using the same bullet exterminator and 2230 but enough talk let's shoot them and see how it does
Man, I'll tell you what, the, I don't know if it's the humidity in the air, the heat, combination thereof, uh, but yeah, I get a lot of mirage right now, and it's making it a little bit challenging to shoot small groups. So we're back at the bench now after a great day of filming, and this particular rifle I do have a lot of experience with. I've taken it on varmint hunts. Actually, just this year it was up in Wyoming on the Spur Ranch in Encampment, Wyoming. I uh, shot a ton of prairie dogs, sage rats, uh, ground squirrels, all kinds of stuff up there. Had a blast with it. And I had no problems uh, shooting prairie dogs out to about 400, 450 yards with this particular rifle, provided the wind wasn't too choppy. So overall it did really well. The only gripe I have is I do wish I would have uh, had a loophole scope with an adjustable parallax on there. That would have been really nice. It is a little bit uh, finicky with the 150 yard fixed parallax on there. You kind of got to move your head. But with that said, it really was no trouble hitting varmints out to those distances with this optic. The glass is crystal clear, looks really good. And overall the 204 Ruger is a solid performer for varmints. So let's go ahead and dive into our results here. This is the first load that we're going to be looking at. This is actually factory loaded ammunition from Hornady. This is their Superformance uh, with an estimated velocity of 3900 feet per second. We got an average velocity of 3785. So ironically a little bit slower than I would have expected out of this 24 inch barrel we have. But it grouped into 0.71 inches. And overall I think that's very good and really representative of what this rifle will average with factory ammunition. The next factory load that we tried though is Hornady Varmint Express, 40 grain Hornady VMAX, same bullets, same case, same estimated velocity of 3,900 feet per second, except with this ammunition we got an average of 39.18 on the velocity, but outstanding standard deviations and extreme spreads and a group size of 0.59 inches. So very good and very representative again of this rifle. Overall in shooting this rifle, I think it will average between half an inch to three quarters of an inch with a good load or a very good factory loaded ammunition. So jumping on over to the hand loading side of things now, the first powder that we tested out here was Ramshot Tack Powder, a personal favorite of mine as it is a very clean burning powder. And that's a point that I don't hear advertised a whole lot by Ramshot or Hodgden who owns them now. But Tack is an extremely clean burning powder, great for high volume varmint shooting. A lot of people really like this powder and I've had decent success with this powder as well. Generally speaking, I tend to get high extreme spreads with this powder in various cartridges, but once you find a good load, as we did here, using 24 grain Hornady NTX, which grouped into 0 .70 inches with an average velocity of 4,365 feet per second, screamer load, very flat shooting, very efficient, and very accurate. Then we went ahead and jumped on over to Shooter's World Precision Powder. This is a new, relatively newer powder company out there, and the more I try their stuff, just the more I like it. There's a lot of really solid applications for this powder. Burn rate's very similar to Varget. Using a personal favorite bullet of mine in the 204, the 40 grain Hornady VMAX bullet, we got an average velocity of 3,512 feet per second, so a little bit slow, but a standard deviation of 12, and a group size of 0.46 inches. Nothing to sneeze at there, and I'm very happy with the results as well. It's also going to be a little bit easier on your barrel. You're not going to burn it out as fast, which is definitely a consideration if you're a high-volume varmint shooter. Rolling along, the next powder tested was IMR 8208 XBR powder, a 26.5 grain charge, which got us a velocity of 3874, standard deviation of 21, a little bit high up there, but not terrible. It grouped into 0.82 inches. This is uh, also a great bullet, 32 grain nozzler ballistic tip, big fan of that. It's performed very well on game. That was one of the bullets I was running while I was up in Spur Ranch in Wyoming, and it just, it's devastatingly effective on varmints. So good load there. The final load that we want to showcase for you is using a personal favorite powder of mine. This is Accurate 2230. I run this in the 204 quite a bit, run it a lot in the 
223 Remington and the 556, 26.5 grain charge, which got us an average velocity of 3,918 feet per second. So real close to that 4,000 feet per second mark with the 32 grain Hornady VMAX. And it grouped into just about half an inch there. Decent extreme spread of 44, standard deviation of 20, a little bit higher than what I'd like, but with a ball propellant and uh, that kind of velocity and accuracy, I'm not complaining at all. And overall, it's performed very well for me. So there's all the hand loads that we tested and to showcase on you. But again, if you want to see everything that we tested, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything, you need to check out LoadData.com. In closing, there's a few things I want to mention. I do think the results of this particular rifle really speak for itself. On average, it can shoot anywhere from half an inch to three quarters of an inch. We saw that across a wide range of loads that we tested. And in some of the more poor shooting loads that we, you know, were off camera, we didn't have time to showcase for you in this video, some of the groups definitely opened up. But this particular rifle also has somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 to 3,000 rounds on it. I don't have an exact round count on this rifle, but I know it has been to Montana. It has been to Wyoming on several varmint hunts. It has shot a lot of coyotes here in Arizona and even been on varmint hunts here in Arizona. We do have some limited numbers of prairie dogs and I've, I've definitely used it for that here in, in Arizona. But overall, my personal thoughts uh, that I want to share with you guys on this rifle is it's is really good. I've had great success with it. I have beat the snot out of it and it's held up very, very well overall. I've had this on horseback. I have had this in the field. I've had it get rained on, hailed on, snowed on, all kinds of stuff. Been on many a varmint hunt and predator stand. And it's always done very well. It's very accurate, very reliable. I can especially appreciate the controlled round feed when I'm in a more dynamic situation, like on the back of a horse. It ensures that my round will go into that chamber because that extractor is holding onto it and literally guiding it right into the chamber. So I think the results speak for itself, but my personal experience with this rifle has also been very good. And as far as the cartridge goes, I think it's a phenomenal cartridge. I'm a big fan of the little 20 caliber projectile and the heavier weight bullets you can shoot out of it, 32 to 40 and even 55 grain bullets. I think they perform very well at respectable velocities. And the barrel life on this particular rifle seems to be pretty decent. I'm pretty happy with it so far. It's not very often that you do a, a second load development on your rifle when it's, you know, over halfway through its life. And it proved that this rifle is still shooting very accurately. Perhaps when I first got it and the barrel was new, it would average more towards the half inch side of things than the three quarter inch side of things. But overall, I have no complaints and I think it's a good rifle, but of course, as always, you guys make the decision. We present you with the facts and exactly what we did so you can test and duplicate for yourself the loads, the ammunition, everything we did, and you can make an educated and informed decision for yourself. So thank you so much for watching. We do greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all the comments. I do my best to respond to every one of those comments, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll try and get back with you as this channel grows. It's getting a little bit more difficult. But if you liked what you saw in this video, I'd invite you to give us a thumbs up, let us know, leave a comment, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon as well so you're notified when we post our next video. We do have a lot of really exciting stuff in the works and I can't wait to get started on that. So until the next episode, I'll catch you guys later.